Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Monroe Live. And before I get going, I got two types of people I'd like to uh, thank. One is Savic for the, uh, for the big amount of uh, money that they gave us for the tour. Uh, but the other one is the, uh, the $13 a bumper sticker uh, guys that, that bought, uh, bought uh, faithfully bought all the uh, little stickers that basically is making all this stuff possible. Um, I will tell you that um, coming down to Pike is um, is a real mm, a real snappy new uh, item that we're going to be selling, and that's the laminates that come out of the plaid motors. Okay, there's very va vastly different than anything else, and uh, we're going to be selling those up soon to to try and fund. Um, whatever we can do to, uh, to make all you folks at home happy with these different uh, presentations. So with that, let's talk about doors. Now, most of you uh, remember when I was uh, looking at the Model Y door, I said, oh man, I love, absolutely love the, uh, the uh, modular door that the Model Y had. I love this because I can make this outside of the vehicle, outside the vehicle, and I can test it and I can validate it and I can make sure it's easy for the build. And then I only have one station on the assembly line and I just take this, and snap it in place and it's done. And if you remember, I brought out this little book. This book is from a long time ago, um, the 80s. And, um, and inside this little book, it says, hey, this is what we're doing. This is called a stick build door. And I said uh, at Ford, this isn't a really good idea. What we should do is make a modular, a modular panel that'll come in and it'll only need one station on the assembly line. It'll work every time. Every time the glass will come up, it'll seal properly. It's the best way to go. Let's make this. And this book, basically, that I did, like I say, in the 80s, um, shows what it could look like. And guess who was creating one that, was, I, that I was using as, a, uh, as, as an example of the way to go? Well, that would be the G, GMT 400 uh, product which, uh, which that, that really was the, that was the start of all this. And here I am talking with the guy that was in charge of uh, body and uh, the guy who was the vice president at the time. And I showed them what I showed them. And this is the guy here that's uh, in, charge of, uh, uh, in charge of the door. And uh, he didn't like the results. I showed him all this stuff. I showed them how much more money it would make, and what did they do? They went and uh, <laughs> they went and made a a new requirement, a specification that would not allow the F-150 to go to that. Now, I uh, threw rocks at other people, and I've praised uh, some folks that have gone in this direction. And the reason for that is because I'm here as uh, somebody who's trying to make quality build and make it easy for the operator and make it convenient and, uh, and better for the ultimate customer. I loved what was done here in the, uh, in the Model Y and I loved the, the, the Mustang even more. It was even better than this one. And now uh, we've taken apart the plaid and I am, I am sad. I am sad plaid, <laughs> plaid sad. And the reason for that is because this is a stick build door and this is a nightmare for the guys on the assembly line. I, uh, I don't know why they decided to keep this idea when they've got this fabulous idea that, that they've already done here on the, um, on the Y, but there it is. So, I've left all the unfortunate news for Ben. So Ben is going to show you how this thing comes to pieces because we don't have 45 minutes to put it together. And that's the <laughs> estimation that, that Ben gave me 
for how much time it might take to put this thing together. Now think about this. This has to be done at line speed. So people have to stick their hands in and get tools in these little teeny holes. And, uh, and that's why I don't care for this. So anyway, Ben, now that I've thrown you under the, or thrown the design under the bus, it's all you. <laughs> all right, Sandy, thank you. In that 45 minutes, it would have been, it would have taken us about 45 minutes. We don't have the right tooling set up here to be able to put this together quickly. On their assembly line, I'm sure they're getting a lot better throughput than 45 minutes on each one, but it's not nearly as efficient as the module, uh, as the module design on the Model Y. So you saw Sandy take that module out. It had the speaker on it. The window regulator was on it. Uh, the motor for the regulator was integrated into it. The wire the harness was there. Yeah. Everything, is, everything is built into it. On this, you can see we've got a speaker and a speaker housing that is mounted to the, uh, to the door. We also have a little carrier over here that is mounted to the door. This little carrier is just so that you can get access to the inside. There's nothing actually mounted to it. If you excuse me here, I'm gonna we'll pull, get the right, the right bit here, and we'll pull some, pull some of these screws out that have to go, come out to get this out, and we'll show you what it looks like inside and how hard it is to access a lot of these things. Um, wire harness connections that are happening inside the door that you can't really see what you're doing. Um, it's kind of a it's going to be a feel for the operator each time that they do it. So as we bring this out, you would have the, the latch mechanical release needs to come out of here. Force that back through. So this is really just a, as you can see, it's a closeout panel. Nothing comes in on it. It's just an extra piece that they have to install. All the individual pieces go in on their own. So while you've got this out here, Let's look at what the real defeating um, uh, phrase is. Well, we don't want to have any extra parts. This is an extra part. This does nothing. This is a closeout panel. Now, look at that. And you can see that this, if I made it about half again as big, I, I'd, have, I'd have what's sitting underneath. The only difference is now I've got total accessibility to what's going on in here. All right, and then we do have a, a seal that's come off of, off of our closeout panel. We'll get that out of the way. So you can see there's a wire harness here that is ran through. There's a few Christmas tree latches on the outside to hold some things in place. Those would be easy for the operator to put in, but there are, this is not a small wire harness. We only have a few connections that are going to be easy to see to put in. If we go to pull the rest of this out, you'll see how big this is and how much is inside that they can't even see. They've got to feed this. Am I going the right? I'm going to go the right way. They would have to feed all the way across to get there. So they've got to get their hand inside, feed all the way across to get over here to make the connection back to the vehicle. And pushing in the grommets. And is pushing a in the grommets from the inside. Let's see if we've got this all coming out. You'll see just how how much is inside. And it just it doesn't there's a lot of stuff inside. It doesn't come out easily. We've got connections to the to the electric <clears throat> latch that was over here. There is a connection that's been made right now to the exterior handle that we've got to get. I'll have to get that undone so we can get that out of there. So there's all of those connections that were inside. Again, we only had about, we only stick out this much on top of our closeout. All of the rest of this is inside. So you can see all of these Christmas tree connections have to be made blindly inside um, the body in white. This is where we're getting to our 45 minutes to install it. We would have to put our hand in there and fish around and find the right hole for each one of these connections to go into. By the way, um, you're saying that there might be some tool. I have never yeah. seen any tooling that can get this job. This is 100% manual, 100%. And by the way, one thing that you kind of glossed over that really is a to try and make work are these two connections right here. One, I can pull through. The other one, I have to try and wangle it in that elliptical hole that you see right down there 
And I'm telling you what, I tried this on the assembly line um, when I was trying to sell this. It was to the uh, Ford uh, Thunderbird, or they used to be called the Fox platform. And for me to try and put this thing in there was a nightmare. You had to have a guy with unbelievably strong hands to pull that in. And you can see these little tweakers that are stuck out here. You pull it in part way and then grab it with a, uh, with a special, uh, special clamp, a special pair of pliers, and you pull it through, but you still need to have grease in order to make it so that it'll pop in. Otherwise, or you put it into a heater, uh, like uh, warm it up. But by the time you pull everything in, this has gotten cold again, and it, it, makes a, it makes it a living hell for the guy on the assembly line. Oh, sorry. Yep. Oh, all good, Sandy. So we do have the speaker that's here as well that we can pop off real quick. They'd have to install the speaker, make that connection to the wire harness. Um, the speaker probably actually would have been installed after the wire harness, so you'll have a little bit better access to this point because you'll have the large hole that's underneath of it that you can reach into, but it's still a blind connection that you're making. You're not, you can't see what you're doing with any of these spots. What's the edge of the stamping like? Is that sharp? This, that right, this, one, this one's rounded, this is not sharp. This one's also been rounded. Okay. So it is, it is designed for sticking your hands in there. They realize that they're gonna be reaching into it um, often. By the way, that's a that's a a, more, a much more difficult type of uh, die in order to make that rounded edge. So and when I was working with Ford, the uh, the thing was steel and it was stamped and raw. There was no uh, there was no provisions for rounding or deburring or anything else. So you wound up with operators getting hurt. All right, so. Not only did you have the speaker, you have a speaker um, mounting bracket that goes underneath of that, where if this were all an injection molded piece, this just gets molded into the right, original. Like that one right there. Correct. Into the uh, module carrier. So you have, we're talking about extra pieces. This is another extra piece. Those two could be combined into one. And now when it gets into here, this is the real bugger to get put in. We have the window regulator that's installed. Um, you can see there's two fasteners up here. Those aren't, see we've got a motor in there as well. So those aren't too bad to get at. You have three fasteners there for the motor for the regulator. And then there's two more fasteners that we tried to put back in, but they just wouldn't line up. You can see into these open holes here, you can see a threaded stud that's there. There is some um, some, as this lays flat, there's some vertical adjustment to it. So it's not even in a defined position. So the operator would have to fasten down a nut on either side, test the window, come back here, make some minor adjustments to move the regulator up and down to get the proper closure. Um, when we're putting together a stamping and, a, uh, stamping here, welding it together, two pieces are never in exactly the same place. So you need to have that, that fine tuning for the final assembly, um, where if you get an injection molded piece, you can be much more consistent with how things, uh, with the tolerances of two, two items. On that happy note, <clears throat> let me tell you that one of the reasons that I was given the job to try and see about a new design for, for, the, uh, for the door module, or for, let me rephrase that, to try and come to something that would help out, is because we had a batch of cars that uh, again, back to the, uh, the, the Thunderbird from a long time ago, we had a batch of cars that they could never get right, four or five days. Now, I tried to get that into my, my assumptions when I, was, uh, when I was writing this report, and I was told, no, 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 that'll all be, once the operators figure it out, right, learning curve, once the operators figure it out, and once we tune in the stampings, it'll all be fine. It never was fine. It's always been a problem. Every time somebody shows me a stick built, that's the stuff that, that winds up happening. This thing can actually put a car on the, uh, on the sidelines for days trying to adjust it. Yep, so that's after it gets installed, the issues. Um, when you take it out, uh, when you're trying to just put the regulator in, you're gonna have some 
alignment issues. So we've got a couple of fasteners here for the top of the regulator we will remove. And maybe and remember, we'll remember, remember, out of there. this is vertical. See mm -hmm. that slot in there? What happens when the nut falls inside? Because normally this isn't built laying down. This is built like, this. oh man, that's heavy. This is built like that. So dropping fasteners inside the door, it happened all the time. And what happens? The customers don't like it. They hear the rattling noises and things like that. Now you can get them out. You, you have little uh, magnets that are on the end of a long uh, flexible stick, basically, and you can pull them out. But at the end of the day, it just is an irritation. It just slows the assembly line down. Right, and we are going to set it down just for us. It makes this a lot easier of a process. We yeah. will get off of the speaker yeah, there. Out this oh, yeah, not done yet. Yep, we're going to take out the, you have some motor fasteners here. They're holding it in place again. All this has to be done at the OEM on the line instead of getting one piece in where they can just pop it in. So while he's undoing that, I want to tell you that we have something called a quality report card. And what we do with that is we can calculate the cost of quality. The cost of quality for something like this is astronomical because there's so many variables, so many variables, so many uh, hidden parts, so many parts that are difficult for the operator or anybody to try and figure out. It, it drives, the, uh, it drives the, uh, the cost up because when you have one, a, a new operator or you have one of these regulator systems, because remember the glass is on this normally as well, one of these regulator systems that, that isn't quite right and it causes grief, you're sidelining side -lining a car in order to just get it so you can make the other vehicles uh, that, are, that, are, that are in queue. So um, are you yep. done? You're gonna shove it oh, out now? Yep, we're gonna just show real quick at how hard it is just to line these holes up. So even if this was vertical or sitting down, I'm blindly having to move around this motor to try and line up the holes. There's no locating features anywhere on this to help me. Um, when you come to the top pieces, the top of the regulator, you've got to try and move it around to find it and hold it up. Then you've got to take your other hand to drive it in. So whether it's vertical or laying flat, it's a two-handed operation to try and line everything up to get it in the right place just to be able to put the fastener in and then hope you're in the right place with the uh, with the variable locations on these, with the slots that you can use. And remember, and can... this is heavy. Um, it's got glass on it and everything else. And when it comes in, it comes in from the top. So we're gonna be sliding it out of the slot uh, here. You might wanna come around. Um, I, actually, I think this one, Sandy has the glass installed in, in vehicle. So this, the glass oh, will kidding. come down in the rail. And there are these two holes, you would have your, our, Looks like our regulator is all the way at the bottom right now. Your regulator would be positioned all the way up. You would put your glass in. This opening is not large enough for the whole regulator uh, assembly to come out. You can see it doesn't, it, it doesn't fit back out. There's no way we could put that in with glass. So it, they are gonna be using these two holes here to drop the glass in and then fasten to the uh, connection to the connection points on the regulator. Okay, so, so this, I think it comes, I think we got it back out here. That's where they put it in and took it out. If we can get a piece out. Oh, that looks much easier to do than, uh, than what I was anticipating. So, but it is, it's not a simple drop in. It's not a a big hole to put it in to be able to line it up. You have to squish it together, pinch it together to push it into place and then open it back up, line up these threaded fasteners with the slots at the bottom, line these fasteners up with the slots, line these holes up. All of that's done blindly with your hands inside of the door. Well, um, that's even it's, worse than yeah. I was anticipating. It is a son of a it, gun. It's a, yeah. yes. And then again, you've got your, uh, where you connect to your windows, you've got a, those would be in the proper location and you are driving through these holes, fasteners into, um, into 
the carrier to be able to the pucks the, they're called the pucks to be able to go up and down with the window so it's again another opportunity to drop a fastener somewhere okay. a lot of alignment issues that you would get so you've got all that so we've got that out then there's also the exterior latch that's in here that there are fasteners you can we'll walk around here that you can see that you have to go through this hole and through this hole to get up into to those fasteners there's one down here that they have another hole you're going through you have to have long extensions on your uh, on your tools to be able to to reach them uh, and get that put in so we're going to leave that in location we're not going to pull it out right now but it's just another thing that's inside the door that you've got to build up um, and then the latch is also built uh, is also mounted to the door which is a common thing for for yeah. all types of doors yeah but okay but so we've, the, we've got more oh nope i was moving to where you are well, right now Sandy. actually so ben's going to tell you about the good thing yeah uh, the good thing found. so this is the glass from the driver's door this is a laminated pane of glass which means there are two pieces of glass here you do this for uh, nvh purposes it helps reduce the uh, noise coming into the vehicle so what they have is they have two pieces of glass and there is a uh, film in between them. When you heat up the glass to form it, it bonds it together and you end up with one, one uh, assembly with two pieces of glass in it. This is heavier and more expensive than standard glass, but um, with an EV, this helps reduce the road noise because you don't have the engine to cover that up. But what Tesla did on this, this one, this is the first time that anybody here at Monroe has, see, has seen it they have a different profile for their two pieces of glass for the inner and the outer. Um, this would always be in the door, uh, so you would never see it. On the outside, you don't need the NVH characteristics of it inside the door because the door is giving you all of that on its own. So by doing this, they've been able to save some weight. And like we like to say, you know, it's a gram a day uh, per engineer to help reduce the weight. Whoever came up with this idea was able to reduce 0.1139 kilograms from just this piece of glass, and that's about a quarter of a pound. So if we were to take this and apply it to the whole vehicle, you're looking at taking about a pound out of the vehicle. Um, you could be getting some cost reductions, some minor cost reductions, because you don't have as much material that's going in here. Uh, so it's really a win-win a from a weight and a cost standpoint and you aren't losing any uh, performance from, from doing this. Okay, so you've seen the good and bad here. And, um, and again, um, our objective is not just to uh, inform all you viewers and whatnot, but also to help uh, all EV companies to know what's perhaps the right way to design their vehicles. So, we talked a little bit about the, uh, the back seat, which I'm, I'm not a real fan of. This, this I didn't know anything about. I just assumed that they were gonna go with another module, but this is a good opportunity to reduce the amount of labor that it would take to put together and also to make a, a better quality product. Mm -hmm. And while we were talking, I was thinking, you know what? Uh, I wonder if this is the reason, because this is the back window, I was wondering if this is maybe the reason that uh, that the um, the insulation the 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 uh, what do you call it the, the, the insulation seal. that goes around the seal that goes around the door maybe that's why it fell down because this isn't quite in the right spot. Again, with that module, I'm pretty much guaranteed that it's always going to be in the right place because it's built offline and uh, and in a wide open space. This, um, you can just see, I can't, I'm sure you can imagine how difficult it might be to take this, fish it through that hole, and then try and figure out how to put nuts and bolts and whatnot on this thing. So anyway, um, <clears throat> not probably um, the, best, uh, the best thing that uh, the Tesla might wanna hear, but think on it, um, again, it's not a new concept. This was done in Actually, uh, I don't know when, 84, I think, 87, sorry, there it is right there, 7, 16, 87, 1987. So um, anyway, there you go.
So thanks for watching, um, Ben. Thank you for uh, for uh, your your struggles there, and you didn't bleed or anything. Oh, so not this good. time. Yep. So uh, keep watching, and um, and we thank you so much for all your support. And if you are an engineer and you're looking for a job that's different, um, we are hiring. Thanks so much. Bye.